Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is F1 Fanatics. Welcome back to the channel and to another episode of the F1 Podcast. It is the podcast that has been voted by you, the commenters of F1 Fanatics, as the best Formula One podcast in the world. I haven't seen this survey yet. I haven't... Was it... Self-professed. Was it done by... Award... Winning podcast. Um, it's won the F1 Fanatics Award as best podcast. Uh, okay. I must have missed their award ceremony. Prestigious one. The F1 podcast. <laughs> the F1 podcast. We're here. Oh, yeah. Podcast. We've got, we got lots oh. to talk about today. We do. We have a um, Tonti's question, um, yeah. as always. Very exciting. Good one. Good good one to go from there. And there's it's been... Little bit of news. Lots of news. Little bit of news. Lots of news. Little bit of news. Lots of news. Okay. <laughs> do, do we go again? Little bit of news. Lots of news. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, shall we just get into it? Yeah, you you take it away, man. You you roll. You you nudes, man. Well, let's first self promotion. F1 Fantasy is back. <laughs> the, 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 the episode came out yesterday. Again. F1 Fantasy 2021 is here, as I put in the thumbnail. Yes. Excellent. It's back. If you missed it yesterday, go check it out. You can start building your teams. And uh, that is big news, of course. It is the huge official news. F1 Fantasy huge, game. Huge, huge Big news. prizes on the line, especially if you join our league. They're massive. Humongous JB prizes. has steadily been like sending me... Uh, pictures of all the prizes <laughs> that he won from the mini leagues over the course <laughs> and uh, it was pretty damn impressive <laughs> has to be said and very jealous just like oh this arrived today from Mercedes these wow. these gloves arrived from Racing Point <laughs> this signed hat arranged, arrived from Red Bull <laughs> JB JB uh, incredible but yes. that was awesome um, um, yeah fancy's back yes news one out the way let's just News 2, 2.0. 2.0. Sir Lewis Hamilton is confirmed. Oh, my God. I didn't see it coming. I've never said that ever on this podcast <laughs> that he was always going to sign and we've, that it's just a media always... circus of absolute <laughs> rubbish for the past whatever. Will he sign? Yes. He's guaranteed an eighth world title. Yep. But Max Verstappen might win this year. Do one, mate. Do one. Well, I learned from that the hard way last year, predicting Sebastian Vettel might win a last world title with Ferrari. <laughs> I learned the hard way. It's Mercedes. Lewis is going to cruise it. Max Verstappen. But Red Bull were closer at the end of the year. Oh, shut up. Mercedes. Mercedes has been like developing their 2021 cars since Barcelona. Something like that. Something ridiculous Something stupid. like that. It was maybe earlier. The British Grand Prix. I don't know. They're cruising it. Don't get your hopes up. We're going to have some exciting meters a bit like last year, but Lewis Hamilton, but Max won't get close. And Aww. then this is something that we clip uh, at the end of the season when Max Verstappen is world champion. Uh, right. In my predictions, my predictions. Steve will be like, Max should have been uh, <laughs> uh, world champion. And then, <laughs> then me going, it'll never happen. <laughs> Mercedes will ne- always win. <laughs> there we go. That, that's it. So Lewis Hamilton, he's back. Yes, wow, confirmed. Surprise. He's on a one-year deal. Um, which, but I which, believe which then led but will he be there in 2022 just let him race the season <laughs> Toto Jesus. basically was like well we thought we better you know there's paperwork to do so we thought we'd just do one year now and we'll talk about 22 in the summer break or something like that um, so basically it isn't this is confirmed Lewis's last year um, but it will be rumoured for the next year Exactly. This is Lewis's last. If he season. if he enjoys it and he wants to keep racing, Mercedes will give him a new deal. Yes, because Lewis is Mercedes's. And driver. even if it isn't mega bucks, he will still sign it because Lewis Hamilton is a global superstar. So yeah. whatever money that Mercedes don't actually give him as a race car driver, 
he will probably just gain in sponsorship. Money. Well, I believe he has now started uh, the diversity program at Mercedes in like a joint partnership. Mm. So that basically seals the long term relationship between the two. So if Lewis is an F1, he's with Mercedes mm. and they'll keep him for however long he wants to stay. I so, think yeah. the last thing we have to say on that is it's brilliant. Yeah. Lewis Hamilton is one of the best drivers of all time in Formula One. We should be buzzing that he's back and excited and we get to watch another season of Lewis Hamilton in Formula One. Brilliant. It's up to the teams to challenge him. Exactly. It's not up to, you know, um, you know, Mercedes to be worse. Exactly. Bring back Bernie. <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> did it. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. <laughs> Mercedes have to drive with a Ferrari powered unit. No! <laughs> Don't make me do it! Don't make me do it! Oh, God. Um, this is the F1 podcast. Yes. That's News 2.0. News 3.0. Um, Yuki, he's done some test laps. He did a whole bunch of test laps, actually. I can't remember where. I think they're in Italy because it's AlphaTauri. Of course. Uh, so yeah, he's he's Yuki's coming along well, getting testing. Uh, after watching Jason the Dream, isn't Yuki Sonoda just the most <laughs> lovable driver? He just is so excited. I want to get to F one. You've done it, Yuki. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was the penultimate race. He's like, I don't feel any pressure. Oh, I yeah. mean, I do feel pressure. <laughs> But, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like it's okay. We we know what you mean. Oh, he was trying okay. to go for the tough act, and then he was like, "No, no, I do." Feel I I reckon I would love to be a fly on a wall with like Helmut Marco. You know, he's <laughs> obviously meant to be like the iron fist of the Red Bull Junior program, and you know, I imagine there's some tough calls with him, and he goes in with like Yuki. They go, "How can I get angry at you? <laughs> How can I be angry at you?" And he's like. Did I do well, Helmet? <laughs> yeah, you did, Yuki. Oh, Rappel to say. Oh, Yuki. Bless him. It's going to be good seeing Yuki. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, and then, new, that was News 3.0. I just thought I'd chuck that in there. Uh, Yuki! New- it's Stephen's favourite. <laughs> new- next news could be Sakir Grand Prix could be back. Back. Obviously, there's still a TBA is, on the calendar. Is, is this if Portimao can't do it? TBA, TBC, TBD, Portimao oh. is they they're going through their second spike, or I I presume it's Portugal's second spike. So cases are through the roof. So F1 are considering doing a Bahrain double header at the start of the year to maintain the 23 race calendar. Not opposed to it. Uh, yes, yeah, like Grand Prix was great. Some great moves on the uh, S's. Just, so yeah. It's just pace. Yeah, it was nice. Um, so, yeah. I think I've covered everything. Have you? Have I? I don't know. I was just, I was putting doubt into your mind. I stare into the distance. Do we need a reboot, Stephen? Sorry? <laughs> reboot uh, Williams have announced their launch date I think for the car that's like March oh so there actually was more news you March... did genuinely need to reboot <laughs> March 6th okay. March 7th one of those days a date in March Williams uh... <laughs> there was so much to remember I don't normally have to remember these kind of stuff it's the return of the toothpaste livery with Colgate no it won't happen no but it how could be a black livery how amazing is that? That that livery actually turned out to be a testing livery. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh, funny. Uh, it could be a black livery, uh, did you say? Yeah, if they I've actually, um, who, there's many great designers on... Uh, March 5th. Kind of F1 Twitter. Uh, and Tim Holmes, I think, did a vamp up of the Williams in a... 1991 Canon livery, something like that. The early 90s Canon livery. And that looked awesome. So basically, Williams get the Canon uh, sponsorship back and uh, have that livery because it looks great. Bam. There we go. That was my stalling adding. Is is that it? That is all the news, I believe. Okay. News, news. Lewis could be 
It's double Bahrain. UK testing. Williams reveal. Yeah. Nice. So we now have five launch dates. Okay, beautiful. We now round off this F1 podcast with a Jonty's question. Brilliant. So they've been coming, they've been great questions actually. Yeah. Great debates to just talk about. So it is now the most iconic overtakes in the last 30 years. That's what we have been challenged. That is the challenge put in front of us by John T this week in his question. What have been the most iconic overtakes uh, over the last 30 years? And I guess we've got to try and pick one. So we, we've got five candidates. I'm sure no doubt uh, people will um, say other overtakes. Yep. We throw it to the audience. Mm. But yes. Yeah. Oh, right. So I should start. Yes. Yes. Right. Overtake number <laughs> overtake number one and we were just watching this one before and uh, there's a clip of like i think itb uh were presenting um the most iconic moments at the spanish gp and peter windsor was covering and bless him he can make the most exciting things seem really dull i mean dear god it it look peter bless him he's been in f1 a long time loves f1 a very knowledgeable bloke about the series, but especially as well with his feeder series commentary last year, it was just like, <laughs> Peter, what's going on? But anyway, <laughs> iconic overtake. Nigel Mansell, Ayrton Senna at the 1991 Spanish Grand Prix uh, was slipstreaming Mansell down the back, well, main straight, and then overtake, and he was on the dirt side of the track. They were literally inches apart from each other, wheel to wheel, and uh, Mansell was braver on the brakes, had the inside line, and was able to take it through the chicane. Uh, wonderful overtake. Wonderful. Yes. And Just Mansell like Peter, was... it's over. <laughs> That's literally, <laughs> it's like, uh, and that was it. It's over. And we were like, sorry? <laughs> wow. Some dramatic closing chapter to an overtake. Just a great overtake. Um, but yeah, uh, that's one of the most iconic ones of kind of Mansells and Senna's duels together. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Mansell yep. versus Senna. Uh, number two, I'm going to go for the um, Schumacher Mika Hakkinen 2000 Spa. Um, it was just uh, okay. I do I need to explain it? Yeah, explain. It's an iconic. I feel like people should just know it. <laughs> they should, but explain. Just by this. Uh, so Schumacher was leading. Mick Hakkinen was hunting down. They went through a rouge down... The Kemmel Strait. The Kemmel Strait. And there was a lap car. Mick Hakkinen went on the outside to take the inside of the corner and uh, overtook Schumacher. I butchered he that. He he basically <laughs> used the back marker yes. as a dummy. It was because Mika knew that he had to try something a little bit different because I, I think just the lap before, uh, Michael had very aggressively shut the door yeah. on Mika trying to take the inside. So it's like, well, I'll try. Uh, so yeah, Michael was going around the outside. Mika went on the inside of the back marker and then suddenly, bam, he was there and in front. Uh, iconic, brilliant overtake. Uh, yeah, and was one of the iconic moments from the two's superb li uh, rivalry, rivalry between 1998 and 2000. Excellent. Number three? Three. Uh, three is for me. I'm going to go with... Sorry, what? Kimi Raikkonen's uh, overtake to take the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix in 2005, overtaking Giancarlo Fisichella. Uh, having gone from last to first in the race, it was on the last lap. Brilliant. Fantastic. What a what an overtake. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's It was made... the pinnacle of a fantastic race from Kimi. Yes, that was it. It was more iconic because of just what he'd achieved the feat of 17th to first uh, in terms of it. Incredible race. Recommend you... Uh, watch that absolutely um, 
Yes, number four. Who did I go for number four? Yeah, <laughs> yep. Uh, the two thousand and eight Brazilian Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton chasing down the title after Felipe Massa crosses the line and is temporarily world champion. All hope is lost. But is that Gronk? I don't know. Is that where? Where is he here? That Gronk. It's no, no, where? no, over there. Oh! No, 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 over there. Is that clock? Is that clock? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was deep. I, I mean, I feel like th- this is... I, I feel like that version of It's Glock is the equivalent of when an artist does an acoustic version of their song. <laughs> like, is that it's, it's, it's Brundle just going... <laughs> is that clock? Is that clock? I don't know. No, is it Brundle? I think so. Um, uh, it might have been Brundle. Oh, Brundle's there. Brundle's there. Yeah, any, anyway. Um, the, the iconic <laughs> of shouting it's Glock, of you going, is that Glock? Is that Glock? That's, we've given you the acoustic version of that overtake. But yeah, basically. It was on the last corner. Uh, Glock had gone off. It was No, it was raining. Glock was on the dry tyres, was losing it all over the place. And Aaron Lewis on the Inters to go flying by and make the one overtake he needed to to secure his one and only world championship before going to Mercedes. Yes, yes, with McLaren. <laughs> he's, he's one and only in his second season in Formula One. And it's just an iconic moment. Yes. And although the overtake itself isn't anything special, it's just iconic for what it meant. Yes. I would say it's probably the most well-known overtake. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, Now, the last one I was going to say was also going to be from 2005, uh, back when 130R was a more challenging corner to overtake on and uh, Fernando Alonso going around the outside to overtake Michael Schumacher. But I realised that people might say that I was favouriting the... It's an honourable mention. It's an honourable mention. There. So it's it's an honourable mention. The one I am going to because we haven't done any from the twenty ten period. And oh well, let's know. We were thinking about this. I initially to mind, I couldn't really think of many iconic overtakes in the twenty tens. Nah. So what I'm going for is the best race of the twenty tens for me, in my opinion. Uh, the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix uh, on the last lap as Sebastian Vettel spins out, Jensen Button somehow completes winning the race and, uh, you know, overtakes Sebastian Vettel on, and wins. on the last corner. And With wins. two drive through penalties, wasn't it? Yeah, six, six pits, six times through the pits. Yeah. Just crazy. Absolutely mental race. And uh, that's the most iconic one for me, just because I re- it sticks in my mind. Yeah, I, I just remember it again. Like the, the the Lewis Hamilton and the Button one, they weren't necessarily iconic, as in the skill of the driver to overtake. It was just the the moment itself, which yeah. is like no way did that just happen. Another honourable mention, though, to maybe not a single overtake, but a collection of quick fire overtakes. That is, of course, Senna at Dunnington in 1993. 93. Belgium. Thank you very much. No problem at all. Uh, first lap, go watch the highlights. Bam. That's all I have to say. First lap, in wet conditions, Senna just carved his way through from, was he started fifth to first? Yeah, fifth to first after lap one. Yeah. Unbelievable. Just, just one of your favourite moments you can watch over and over again. Now... If we were to pick the best one, I go with the 2000 Mika Hakkinen and Schumacher one. Yeah, 100%. I think the Mansell one was... I can't even disagree. The Mansell one was very, very difficult. Uh, that that came close. That was the second one for me. Uh, the third was Raikkonen's on Fisichella. And then, obviously, the bottom ones, just although iconic moments, not iconic overtakes. Yeah. But for... The overtake itself and just the ballsiness of it of Mika Hakkinen. Uh, yeah. 
is that one down the Kemmel Strait. Yep. Beautiful overtake. There you go. That's that's it. We want to hear your iconic overtakes from the last 30 years. Uh, what would have made your list? Do you agree with our list? And uh, comment down below with which one is the best, in your opinion. Thank you, John T, for another superb John T's question. Uh, any, anything else? No. Do we... Do we promote the Discord then at this point? Yes. We have a Discord. The link is in the description. Come chat anything, mainly motorsport related, whether it's F1 or IndyCar, obviously, must have an Indy Fanatics as well, or football, fantasy related. You can get all the stuff in there. We have loads of kind of sub chats uh, with everything. So, yeah, uh, everyone can join there. Link in the description. We also stream about four or five times a week on Twitch. Twitch up TV sports F1 Fanatics Gaming. Yes, yeah, so it's been a difficult week on the uh, Twitch front just because on pure basis uh, that Snow Fanatics has been in full flow. Yep. Probably would have streamed today though. Probably. Yep. We'll see. <laughs> or you would have seen. Uh, yes, maybe. And obviously we would have streamed, not on Twitch, but uh, our Motorsport Manager Live. We don't need to promote that. Because everyone knows about it. That is the Motorsport Manager live stream that you'll ever need. Absolutely. And um, so, yeah, links in the description below to our Discord and Twitch chat. Yep. That's it from us. So let us know in the comments your thoughts from today's episode. And if you're new around here or haven't done so already. You can like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it. So for now, UF1 fans. Keep racing.